I'm going to give you three secrets to living this victorious life so that no one can ever take your crown. I'm going to give you three things that you can remember the rest of your life. And if you will live by these three things, you will never, ever live an unhappy day of your life. You'll never, ever be defeated by anything that's trying to tell you that you're defeated by anything that looks like it's defeating you. It will not defeat you. This is how I live every day of my life. And this is how you can live every day of your life. If we're seated with Christ in heavenly places and Jesus is at the right hand of the father, then we must learn to live. Number one, from the throne, we need to live from the throne. Everybody say from the throne. Now, what does this mean to live from the throne? The Bible says in Romans 5, 17, through the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, we reign in life. So we live from the throne. That means to say we are seated as victors in Christ. We're not trying to win any victory. We're not trying to finish the work. Jesus has finished the work and he has given us the victory. The single most important truth in the Bible is that Jesus Christ has finished the work for your salvation, for your deliverance, for your healing, for your redemption and for your victory. And he has taken his seat at the right hand of the father and he has seated you and I with him. Didn't think I was going to pull that off, did you? (laughs) So if we're if we're if he has seated us with him, then we get to live from the throne. That's from a position of victory. We are not trying to work our way into the throne room of God. We're not trying to earn our way into the throne of God. We're not trying to merit our way or battle our way into the throne room of God. We have been seated with Christ at the right hand of God. The entire message of the gospel is that Jesus Christ has conquered every enemy and won every battle. And if we are in him, then all of those victories are ours. Some of us are like, as soon as I get this job, as soon as I get over this problem, as soon as I beat this addiction, as soon as I overcome this, you already have overcome. You're more than a conqueror. So you might as well just throw the party right now. You might as well just celebrate the victory right now because it's yours. This picture I want you to see living from the throne. Everybody say from the throne. This picture. Of being seated. It's a place of rest. It's a place of completion. It's a place of victory. So you don't ever face another battle another day in your life. Without facing it from the throne where, you know, you already have the victory over it. And all that's left for you to do is praise and praising doesn't give you the victory. You're just praising God because you got the victory. We don't praise him to get the victory. We praise him because we got it now. Right now you have the victory already. Living from the throne. Number two, this is what's got to permeate our thinking. Number one, we got to live from the throne. Number two, we get to live at the throne. We get to live at the throne. The Bible says we can come boldly into the chambers of our father's throne and boldly receive mercy and grace at the throne of his generosity. It's called the throne of grace. It's the throne of his goodness. It's the throne of his unmerited love. It's the throne of his unmerited favor. It's the throne of his generosity. We can come boldly to this throne of God's grace and receive mercy and grace to help us when in time of need, any time in time of need. So we get to live at the throne. We get to live at the throne and receive mercy. So living from the from the throne, living from the throne is living at a living from a place of of victory. It's living from a place of victory, living from the throne, living at the throne is living from a place of receiving. I get to live from a place of receiving. I can receive mercy and grace any time I need it. You can receive any time and you can boldly come. You can run right into the arms of your heavenly father. You don't have to knock real softly on the door. Hope he's not. I hope he's not in a bad mood. 
you go just boldly bolt your way into that room and into that throne and say, I'm living at the throne. Heavenly Father, thank you for letting me in. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that got me in here and the blood of Jesus that keeps me in here and the blood of Jesus that never runs out and the blood of Jesus that is the fount from which I worship you and praise you and thank you. And everything stems from the blood of Jesus. And that's why I can boldly come to this throne of grace and I can be at a place of receiving all the days of my life. Whatever I need, if, if it's mercy, if it's grace, it's Something I did wrong. I need some mercy. Something I can't do. I need some grace. My God, it's available to every one of us all the time. We're living at the throne. This is how to live. It's three things. Number one, we live from the throne. That's the place of victory. Number two, we live at the throne. That's the place of receiving. And number three, we live for the throne. That's the place of giving glory to God. We live for the throne. We live for the glory of God. In Luke chapter 17, 10 lepers were cleansed. But notice what Jesus says when one of them turns back to give thanks. And he says, weren't there 10? <laughs> I'm kind of the son of God. I created the universe. I'm just you know, recounting the number here for a minute. He's thinking, uh, weren't there 10 that were cleansed? Like he knew he's asking them, weren't there 10 that were cleansed? But where are the nine now? Was no one found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? He returned to do what? Give glory to God. He returned to do what? Give glory to God. How did he give glory to God? By giving thanks for what Jesus already did. You want to know how to give glory to God? You give glory to God by thanking him for what he's done. You give glory to God by believing. The Bible says and Abraham did not waver in faith, but grew strong and he did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in faith, giving glory to God, holding on to the promises of God, whether you feel it or see it, gives glory to God. And what else gives glory to God? Bringing others into the kingdom of God gives glory to God. These are the things that give God glory. So we live from the throne, place of victory, we live at the throne, a place of receiving, and we live for the throne, a place of giving, a place of giving, a place of victory, a place of receiving and a place of giving. That's how it, that's how to live. What should I do with my life? Live from the throne, a place of victory, live at the throne, a place of receiving, live for the throne, a place of giving giving your life, giving him glory, giving him thanks, giving him your faith, giving him your confidence, giving him your trust, giving him whatever you have to give him glory. We were created to give God glory. We're never happy in life until we do what we were created to do. You want the joy of your salvation back? Live from the throne, the place of victory. You want the joy of your salvation back? You want the power? Live at the throne, a place of receiving. You want happiness and fulfillment and total life satisfaction? Live for the throne, a place of giving the glory to God. You can have it all because Jesus did it all. And therefore, we live from victory over it all. We receive all that we need and we give him all the glory. You live like that. It's easy life. It's a simple life. I'm not saying it's not going to be challenging at times, but that's the simple life. That's the summary of it all.